and I am so f pissed off at myself. I just, I am just, it's just, I have nobody to blame myself. I have got to catch this fish. A blinny. He looks skinny, doesn't he? Too skinny, I think. I put him in here thinking he'd be a good fit, but I think the blenny is starving to death. Really thin, sort of all around. I tried to catch the blenny a couple weeks ago, but man, this blenny is so fast. And I didn't give him my best effort, so I got a new net. And I'm ready to pick it up and catch it. I will succeed, and I'm going to move the blenny to the clownfish harem tank. There's just a ton more algae and a ton more live rock for the blenny to feast on. Coming for you, blenny. You will get a new home today. I will not be defeated. I'm gonna try to keep my hands out while I'm doing this, but last time I tried, he was just so fast and he just hid. I think he hid under the rock at one point. I'll probably have to like pick up some of the rocks and maybe move some of the corals around. And then I'm just gonna move him directly over to the clownfish harem tank. So I'm not even gonna drip acclimate him because the tanks are very, very similar. locating him because oh i see him okay okay I, I, he freaks out as soon as i put this in here he's over here we gotta watch see where he goes he's gonna freak oh my god i got him i got him that was the easiest thing in the world i built this up to be like the most challenging difficult thing in the world and he slid right in <laughs> the first time there he is <laughs> so easy <laughs> it's ridiculous Okay, well, that's your new home. That had to be like the less stressful fish catching and move I've ever done. This is my current dosing setup. This is for the frag tank right here. All right there. It's using a couple of these bulk reef supply jugs that I've had for five years probably. And then this is a dosing pump What's it called? Aqua Aqua Trend. They're a Polish company. Anyway, I, I, I have to keep this towel over it because my cats have already chewed through the line once. So what I want to do is I want to make it look like my other one. So I bought another Simplicity dosing container. And then these are the old Camor Bluetooth pumps. But I went ahead and bought the new Camor pumps, which are the Wi-Fi ones, which I'm actually really excited about. Because these ones, if there's a power outage and you're away, you can reset them from your phone. But the problem with these is they're only Bluetooth. So anytime a power goes out or there's a glitch, you can't reset them from far away. You have to have your phone like right next to it to make it reset. I'm not exactly sure where to install them because they look nice, but I think the only space I really have is back on the floor over there. They're nice looking. There it is. These are really nice. I like these. And they're affordable. I could put it like here. I mean, yes, that probably looks the best, but I, I mean, one cat jump and it's done. Well, I think that's fine. I mean, it's not perfect. It's a decent spot. We can always move it later. The plugins are right behind it. I've been trying for an hour already to get these pumps connected, these two Camor pumps, and it just won't work. It won't work. It's incredibly frustrating. So I think I need to take a lunch break <laughs> and figure this out. I don't think it's anything I'm doing. I think there's a problem with the connection. It's, uh, 115. I started this, I don't know how long ago. I'm still trying. I mean, this this keeps happening over and over and over again. And I've gone online and I've looked at Coral View's website because they have a lot of questions and answers. And then I went to Reef Central, I think it was, and I read all of them. And evidently these Camor X1 Pros can only connect to 2.5. Four, not a five gigahertz or whatever the right wording is. So you have to change the name. So I figured out how to go into my, my router and I logged in and I separated the 2.4 from the five and I renamed the 2.4 and then I tried connecting with the 2.4 several times and then I tried connecting with the five. Some people said some sort of phones didn't work. So I tried using my wife's phone. That didn't work. Some people said you have to restart the phone. I've restarted it several times. Some people say do a hard reset of the X1 pumps. I've done the hard reset several times already and it's just, it's not working. It won't connect. So I'm waiting to hear back from Coral view and I know they're gonna be helpful. They're always super helpful. 
It's just really frustrating. Who makes a product that is this difficult with this many glitches? The whole, I mean, there is no backup way to, to program this. The only way to program this is to use Wi-Fi and the app. And I'm just not able to connect it. So now I'm just sitting over here with this sitting here. And now I just have to wait and hopefully figure this out. I don't know. I, it's a frustration. It's something that, that needs to be fixed, obviously. I'll let you guys know if I ever figure it out. Okay, as expected, Angie from CoralView got right back to me. Move the X1 next to the router with the pump and your phone. Power on the unit, immediately press and hold the reset button for two seconds or until the light blinks quickly. Let it go. Wait and then try again. So I'm doubtful it's gonna work, but let's give it a shot. Here it is, it's done. In case you wanna do this setup, these are the Camor X1 Pro dosing pumps. They were a huge pain to set up, but CoralView got right back to me. But it comes with just standard airline tubing, which is fantastic. And then this is the Simplicity dosing container. I have two of these now. These are fantastic. It's like only $60 for the price. And they come pre-made with the straws here. So you just attach the airline tubing to the straw. Nice little acrylic top, enough to hold two liters in each of the containers. Fantastic. I think this runs about $60. These are about 90, so what, 180, 240. So it's not a cheap setup, but it's a really clean setup. Sorry, I totally forgot to show you the app. So here's the app. Here's my two devices, right? I have the left calcium, right alkalinity. You click on it so you can say how much is left so it'll warn you so there's 2000 milliliters there so i just set it up for eight milliliters four times and then it automatically set up the times and then if you want to do a manual ad like you're priming the line just click on the manual setting there you can do whatever you want set how much you want start stop they'll start and stop i unplugged it just to test it and when i unplugged the system they came back online by themselves which is fantastic so i'm not worried about that coral view thank you guys i really appreciate your help Walked out here in the morning, check on my tanks as I always do, look at all the tanks, I check every single one of them, and then I walk up here and I see that. And I am so f pissed off at myself. I just, I am just, it's just, I have nobody to blame but myself. And look at this. No, that's what happened right there. Got out right there. And just, I, I hate seeing this. One, because it's 100% my fault and it could have been preventable and I knew I needed to fix this and I didn't fix it. And two, I just imagine the last minutes of this clownfish lives, how awful it was to see the water and not be able to get out. And plus these clownfish are gorgeous. They can live for, you know, 20 years, 30 years in captivity and now it's dead because of me. So unhappy day and anybody watching this, don't put off the things you know you need to do. Your fish's lives may depend on it. Ugh. So frustrating. Sorry for the swearing, but I just, I'm, I let myself down and I'm frustrated by it. Well, it's nothing fancy, but it's like just my standard mesh screens that I make. A little cattywampus. If you, if, if you pull it a little too tight, see that? It does that. So I pulled mine a little too tight, but it will still stay straight. Sometimes if it's really tight and it looks like this, you just have to go back, loosen it up and do it again. But this is fine. It's two colors, unfortunately, because I didn't have the other color available, but that's fine. I think it's good. There it is and all it's not fanciness, but look, no gaps there. No gaps there. Tiny gap there, tiny gap there. See that? But not enough to even fit my pinky in. So that's still relatively small. And then on the back side, teeny tiny gap again. But I think that'll be good enough. All right, well, no more clownfish are gonna die because of my stupidity. Is the 14 gallon cycled yet? I've been using her in Turbo Start for about a month now. And the ammonia is probably down close to zero. But let's check the nitrite. If the nitrite's actually at zero, maybe we can actually put some stuff in here. Well, this is about three weeks longer than I thought it would be so far. The cycle yet? No, it's not. Maybe next week? I'm taking a video every single day a short little video without a good microphone, giving a little update on the sick anemone and how the treatment's going. 
So here's what happened this last week. Okay, this is day one, about 12 hours of treatment. Already looks better than it ever has. Don't know if it's antibiotics or if it's something in this water. But yeah, day one looks super puffy. Can't even see the mouth. It's closed nice and tight. This is day two. It just deflated and expunged its stomach content, so I'm going to have to do a water change in the morning. Day two, the second full day. Day three, yesterday was not a good day for the NEM. Today, looking better. We'll see if it expunges its stomach today. It did yesterday. Didn't look great yesterday, but today it's definitely looking quite a bit better. All right, we're day four of the treatment yesterday. Did not do any spewing, did not do any deflating. Uh, did excrete a little bit, but no deflating. And today, so far, even though it's just the morning, I saw an excretion, but no deflating. So if that happens again today, that's two days in a row. So I'm hoping the Cipro treatment's working. Well, evidently day four has backtracked. You can see that little center, see that little center? I don't know if it's gonna focus. There's like a little white circle in the center, like a, like a little marble. I think that's its stomach all the way out, and it's completely deflated in the morning when I'm checking it. Definitely the wrong direction today. We had two days in a row where it didn't do this, and then today it's doing this. I just need to double check. I just checked my heater to make sure the temperature was right. Uh, so I don't, I don't know what's going on here, but I'm going to keep watching it. Today is day four, I think. I don't think it's day five. I think it's day four. Hopefully it's not a long-term setback. Day five, I believe. It's the best looking day yet because of yesterday's setbacks. Remember how it, it totally deflated on day four? I upped the dose of Cipro from 250 to 300, and it looks amazing today. So I, I mean, I'm going to have to go longer than seven days because at a minimum, I need to wait three days without it deflating. So I'm at least going into day eight at this point. So I'm hoping it doesn't deflate today or the next three days. Check it out, we're still on day five, and it's having another deflate cycle. I'm gonna just blow away whatever's in there, whatever gunk's in there, and see if it'll puff right back up. You can see a little red stuff coming out of its mouth. Well, you can see it right there. I was actually able to just suck it up into here. So I'm hoping now that that's removed, that the anemone will puff right back up. And look, it looks like it's already puffing back up, so. I mean, does that mean I have to extend it another three days? Probably. I mean, this anemone might be in here for a while, you know? Well, here we are, day five or six. This is the second day of upping the Cipro to 500 milligrams, and it's still doing this. I mean, <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, I'll, I'm gonna keep treating it, but um, it's not getting any better, evidently. So that's frustrating. It's about two hours later from that previous video. You can see it looks better, but I mean, its stomach was all the way out. I mean, I, that, that can't be normal. I don't see any of my other NEMs exhibiting that behavior. So I don't know what's going on at this point. It's been had antibiotic treatments now for five or six days and it's still doing that. So I don't know, it's frustrating. So since starting the harem tank, I've learned a few things about anemones. I've learned actually a ton about anemones, but here are the facts and here are the things that I've learned from all of you in the community pointing these things out to me. First up, iodine or iodide is evidently really, really important. And evidently activated carbon can pull out some of that iodine. So it's really important to test and to keep up with your levels of iodine. The second thing on that note, evidently Lugol's iodine or iodide, I'm, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not a chemist here. I don't know what iodide or iodine is, but evidently Lugol's is very different than like the Kent Marine product that you buy. So I don't know what the difference is. I do know that with like a Lugol's, you have to put in a lot less. And I also know that a lot of people don't like Lugol's. I don't know why. So I need to do a lot more research into the kind of iodine I add and supplement to the tank. The third new thing I learned, anemones catch infections. Didn't know that, now I do. The fourth thing I learned, which I've known for a while, is when hobbyists say high lighting, anemones need high lighting, that is an extremely fluid term. To some people, high lighting means four, five, 600 par, and to other people, it means 150 to 200 par. So when somebody says they like high lighting and you wanna mimic their lights, actually figure out what their par is and don't just assume. The fifth thing I've learned is that hobbyists do not agree about nitrates and phosphates and the effect they have on anemones. Some of you in the comments have sworn to me up and down that you need low phosphates and low nitrates. And others said their anemones thrive with higher phosphates and higher nitrates. So I don't know what to do with that one. 
And the sixth thing I learned, you gotta test for trace elements. These trace elements could be really, really important for the anemones. So, so, wait for it. I spent, I spent 60 bucks. Look what I bought. How many of you guys are curious right now what my iodine levels are? What do you think they are? And just so you know, I have been dosing. I've been dosing these, these thingies, the trace colors, right? So I've been dosing all these now for a week or so. I have no idea if I'm overdosing or underdosing. So I don't know, what do you guys think? Do you think I'm low iodine, medium, or high levels of iodine? Let's actually use this test kit, which I've never used, and find out where I am. Now we just have to wait. So how this works is you look down from the top and you look at this one, the standard, and when that color matches, then it's ready and then you compare that color. So the standard over here still looks a little dark and it says it could take five to 15 minutes. So we can't compare them yet, but we'll come back in a second. I think the standard color is pretty close. Check that out. It gets lighter as time goes on. So if we come over here to the test vial right here, I think that looks like, I think it looks like 0 0.06, which is okay. Well, that's all I got for you. See you next week.